Hi, it's Mr. Wasman, and today we're going to be looking at identifying figurate number patterns. It's just a fancy way of saying we're going to be looking at a picture, and can we spot what's changing? We're in uh, our math journals on pages 252 and 253, so let's just jump right in. I'm going to just look at page 252 today, okay? And uh, as Mr. Wasman has been learning about this Explain Everything Whiteboard app, he's been learning about some of the different tools. So let's employ one of those tools. See my little arrow there? That's going to point out these figurate uh, patterns. It says draw the next three rectangular numbers. Well, if I look at my numbers uh, in each row, I see that my first figure right here has just two dots, and it's in one row. But when I look at my second figure, I now see that my, uh, my figure has two rows, and there's a third dot added to each row. So what's happened is I've increased uh, the number of rows from one to two, and I've increased the number of dots in each row from two dots to three dots. And that pattern continues. So now I have one, two, three rows, and I have four dots in each row. And in this fourth figure, I have one, two, three, four rows, and I have five dots in each row. Now these are all just arrays that show us a multiplication problem. One times two, two times three, three times four, four times five. So now we need to draw what would be the next figure in that uh, pattern. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using a copying tool to help me. Okay, and that copying tool is going to help me create uh, a new pattern starting right here. So you'll see I've duplicated the 4 times 5 pattern. But now I've got to add an extra row. So again, I'm going to copy. I'm going to add that row on top. So I went from four rows to five rows. There you go. And now I have to add an extra dot in each row, or an extra column, basically. So I've added an extra row, and I've added an extra column. So what do we now have in this new figure that I've just created. Well, I have five rows, and now I have six dots in each row. So that's five rows of six. So if I were to continue that pattern, okay, without drawing it, what I'd have to do is I would just think about the multiplication problems that these arrays are showing us, okay? So this one right here is one times two. This one is 2 times 3. This one's 3 times 4. This is 4 times... Oops. Undo that. 4 times 5. And then we see the newest one that I created. This represents 5 rows with 6 in each row, 5 times 6. So then what would come next? Well, if I look at that... The number pattern in the uh, factors of each of my arrays, okay, I see that each factor is increasing by 1. If I look at these two right here, I went from 1 to 2 in my first factor, and then I went from 2 to 3 in my second factor. So if I continue that pattern, what would happen next? Well, that's right. If I took 5 and I increased it by 1... My next pattern would have to have six rows, and then if I increased my second number, my second factor, by one, my second factor would be seven dots in each row. So my factor uh, would increase by one for each factor, making it six times seven. And then my next pattern after that would be seven times eight. Now down here at 2a, it's asking us to complete the list of the first 10 rectangular numbers. And again, I kind of kind of uh, gave a couple spoilers by s using the phrase array, because that's what all these patterns of dots are, they're arrays. 
So as you can see, my first array is 1 times 2, and 1 times 2, of course, is going to give us 2. Our second array, 2 times 3, is going to give us 6. So then the question becomes, what are my uh, uh, numbers or my products going to be for my rectangular numbers? Well, if we came up with 5 times 6, that's 30, and then 6 times 7 is 42. So now I just need to come up with uh, a couple more uh, patterns. Okay, so we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 uh, arrays pictured. I have my sixth uh, problem, 6 times 7 uh, here. That gives us our product of 42. So now I need to just come up with uh, 4 more rectangular numbers. And I'm going to do that by coming up with some more uh, pairs of factors. 7 times 8, 8 times 9, 9 times 10, and then 10 times 11. So with that, I have 10 multiplication problems. 5 that are currently represented by an array, and then 5 that I've just given you the, the factors. So you would have to find the products to come up with the, the remaining uh, numbers or the remaining products that would go here. Okay? Now, down here, number three, it's asking us to continue uh, to follow the pattern, to basically break down what we just did by coming up with our rectangular numbers by adding a number or adding one to each factor of the previous problem. Okay, So if I look down here in the first three uh, uh, patterns right here, okay, uh, 2 equals 2. Okay, So that there was just two dots. That's uh, saying basically 1 times 2. Okay, uh, There was one row with two in each row. So there was nothing to multiply except for itself. Here, what we did is that we added another row and we added another dot to each row. So my addition pattern is this, 2 plus 4 equals 6. And let me show you how I came up with that. Okay, so originally I just had two dots, as you can see. But by adding a second row and by adding a a, a, another dot to each row, I basically added four more dots. So my number increased from two to six. Two plus four is six. Now my third addition uh, pattern shows us that I had six, as you can see right here, and then I increased my array once again by adding another row, and another dot in each row. So I increased my number by adding one, two, three, four, five, six more. That's where that number came from. Okay. So with each of these arrays, I'm increasing, um, basically, I'm, I'm adding up uh, the total of the next row and the total extra dot that's been added to each row. So what would be the next amount? Well, you can use a little uh, deductive uh, reasoning here. Uh, 2 plus 4 plus 6 equals 12. So 2 plus 4 plus 6 in the next problem is also going to be, you guessed it, 12. So if I know that that's 12, and I know my next sum is 20, I know that addition and subtraction are two parts of the same fact family, okay? And if I know that 12 is one add-end and my sum is 20, then my missing number is the other add-in. Now if I flip that around, I can make that into a subtraction problem. 12 plus something gives me 20 can also be represented as 20 minus 12. And of course we know that 20 minus 12 is going to give us 8. Now if I go up to that array right up here, and I 
I can see that if I started with 12 dots here, and I looked at the number of dots that were added by adding an extra row and a dot in each row, I have eight more dots. So that is how I come up with eight. Okay. So this uh, line of thinking helps us understand how numbers increase dramatically and exponentially when we uh, change variables. So when we add another row, or when we add another uh, column to each row, that changes the, the nature of the number. So continue on uh, adding and completing the patterns of addition. And then I want you to try the problems on page 253 as well. We've got some different uh, models uh, to build off of. Uh, and on number 4A, we have a triangular uh, number model as well as a rectangular one. So that triangle model is not going to be a multiplication array, but it's still going to show us a pattern that increases. If you have questions, feel free to uh, talk to your math teacher. Otherwise, we will speak again tomorrow. Thanks.